What's up everybody? So today we're going to dive over into Photoshop and have a look at a couple of ways of how we might replace a sky in an image. Now this is something that I will do from time to time because when you go out and take especially like landscape photos, um, you never quite know what the weather's going to be like, you can't control what the sky is going to look like, everything else you can usually compose yourself, you might get very lucky on the day and the sky actually matches the image you want to take and you can move around and sort of tweak your composition but then there are times where the sky's just boring there might be nothing going on uh, the wrong things going on or the shape of the clouds what's going on in the sky might not necessarily match the composition of the image what you're after and in those cases instead of just abandoning the shoot and not bothering to take the shot always take the shot and see what you can do in post but the first thing you want to ask yourself is do you have to replace this guy so before we go into replacing these guys i want you to actually just take some time have a look at my other video as well on fixing your skies and just see is what you've taken recoverable because you might be surprised there's a lot of hidden details and things you can do with what's actually been taken, especially if you're shooting in RAW. But for the sake of this video, let's say you've done that, you can't get what you want out of the photo and you want to go ahead and replace those skies. So let's have a look at how we might do that in Photoshop. So I've got an image here and you can see that the sky is quite blown out here. It, it was a bit of an overcast day as well. Um, but I'm very happy with everything else that's going on in the photo here. Compositionally, even if I was to sort of try and bring back some of these details, uh, sky makes up a, a big part of a landscape image. It's that sort of top third of your composition. In this case, it's actually making up over half of the image here surrounding the abbey. So what I want is to actually replace this with a sky, which is going to uh, benefit the composition and kind of draw our eyes in here a little bit more. So for this one, we're going to use the sky replacement tool within Photoshop. So if I go up to the top to file, across to edit, and I go down to sky replacement. Now this is a great function. I'm not sure when this actually came in, because I think this was an update that happened and I was just blatantly unaware for a while that it was even there. Um, but it's a great tool. So when you load it up, Photoshop does a very good job of detecting the sky, kind of a similar way that Lightroom does now as well, whereas in the past you used to have to paint over that. It does a really good job of sort of detecting the sky and you can see down here as well, right across the horizon line, we can see the sky touching the surface. And you've got over here a load of skies already pre-laid in, so you can select different ones that you want. And within these, you might find one that actually matches your image a little bit more. So this one, for example, sort of matches what I'm going for with clouds kind of forming around the building. Once you've found uh, one you like, you've then got a load of functions down here that you can work with, so we can change the temperature of that to make that a bit cooler or we can make it a bit warmer there. If you're struggling to get the actual scale right, we can choose to make this larger or smaller, but we equally we can just come over to the top here and we can actually just drag that sky up and down and see where the horizon is the bottom bit there. I'm just gonna stick those clouds down a bit better. So we can scale up, move this around, do some bits of work. We can look at the blending side of it so we can fade the edges on these as well. And there's already some nice functions built in with that. But let's say you've had a look through this and you can't quite find the sky that you want. What I tend to do then is go onto stock websites and I'll just download uh, a landscape photo which has kind of that um, sky, the composition that I want within the sky to match this. And we can use this sky replacement tool still so we can upload our own sky images into that. If we go down to the side here, down to the bottom, and we hit the plus button, we can bring up and we can load in any skies that we want. So if I load in this one here, you can see that that now has come in. So I'm gonna to choose to select that. So I'm gonna rescale that and then just pull this across um, to kind of match the composition that I'm after. And the reason I'm choosing this sort of sky image is because I, I really like what the Wisps of the Clouds are doing here and I kind of want these as almost acting like leading lines uh, to draw the eye away from the sky a little bit more and into the center where the Abbey is. Um, and then I can do some of my usual adjustments here. If I go down to the bottom, I then have the option to edit some of the foreground that's there as well. So there's a lot of stuff that's built in and you can tweak this. Once I'm happy with all of that, then I'll make sure I outbound that to new layers and I click OK. And what that's actually done has removed our sky for us, but it's created the individual layers here as a group. So if I take that away, I'm actually back to my original photo. So rather than having to go in and manually remove the sky with erasers and stuff, which you may have to do if the 
like the software doesn't quite pick up everything. You might still have to do a little bit of that, but you can easily go back and forth and try out these sky replacements then on this. Um, once I'm in there, then what I will probably end up doing if I spent a little bit more time on this, I would tweak everything that's going on just to match the sky to the image a little bit more. Okay, so that's a really cool way and a quick way to do it as well if you've got an image that allows that. Sometimes, I've never actually tried this on using like a forest image when you've got sort of the sky in between all of the leaves and things and that was always a challenge before, like trying to remove that. Um, that's something I'm gonna say for a later video of a method not using the sky replacement on how you can tackle some of that side of things. But let's say we had an image that didn't have a strict horizon. So if we look at this photo here from the Lake District, this is one that I just snapped um, at the top of one of the mountains. I can't remember what trail this was specifically, but I really like the shot coming down. Again, there's a lot kind of going on in the sky. It was a bit gray and the entire image, you know, just feels a bit dull. So. This was one straight away for, I want to replace the sky on this. Again, I'm thinking about my composition here. Um, I want to have something that looks a bit more of a stunning photo, doesn't look as dull and grey. I could try and fix this and go for a bit more of like a stormy feel. But I wanted something really bright. I wanted almost like a, a sun over the top here just to sort of shine across. So I'll go on a stock website and I'll find a photo that perfectly sort of matches what I'm going for here. However, if I use the sky replacement now, we see as we go into the image here, there's uh, the horizon line could end up becoming quite strict. So I want to actually blend my sky into the bits of sky that's here so it looks a bit more natural. So I'm going to open up my sky image here and we can see that we've got again, I've tried to find a stock photo which uh, the horizon matches a little bit similar. So I've still got some mountains and how the sky hits it there, we see that sort of faded look. That way it's gonna like blend a little bit better with the image itself. So I'm gonna come across here and paste that in, scale that down to what I want. And usually what I do at this point before I start adding in any layers and things, I'll just go down to multiply. That way I can kind of see roughly where the horizon is sitting. So I want that sun to be sat just in the right spot. So with the multiply tool on, I can kind of like roughly see what this is gonna look like. Uh, I'm gonna put that back on normal and then I'm just gonna hide all, all of these layers going up to the top layer there, layer mask and hide all. So now what I can do is just take a brush and I can take a nice soft round brush. I can lower the, um, the flow of it down and just simply brush over this layer and that's gonna to start to bring in that new sky. Now I'm not gonna start at the top and go down, I'm actually gonna go the other way. I'm gonna start down here on the horizon line and I'm gonna brush across so that I can get fix what I want and get that blend coming across there. And then I'm gonna work my way up. I'm gonna make sure I get that sun in. And then I'm gonna work my way up across there because this I can just brush over that's gonna be 100%. The horizon is where I wanna blend the two of these together a bit more. And you can see what we end up here with is we're actually pulling in some of the clouds that were already there in the image and trying to make them look part of this horizon line still down at the bottom bit here. You can see it's just a little bit over there, might want to, and you might end up bringing in some of the other mountains as well. That's not a problem. That's the reason why I picked this stock photo in the first place was so the horizon kind of matches what I'm after. But I can just go in and get really sort of detailed and look at, okay, where have I brought in some extra mountains? Um, going either way and just sort of taking them out a little bit more if I wanted to be true to what's happening down there. The point is this crossover part now I can still see some of the original clouds in the image, but now I've blended them into this new sort of sunrise here. And I'm just gonna go over and make sure I'm not adding in any extra mountain bits. And there we go, I can be really detailed with this, but now I've got something that matches uh, compositionally what I was after a bit more, just a nice sky, it's kind of sun breathing through. The downside of using stock photos is some of them have already been pre-edited, so you can see here that even though this works a bit more compositionally, the horizon looks nicer where the sky and the land actually meet. 
what's happened this time is though this is quite bold um, compared to our raw file down here unedited so we would have to do some layer work with this just to match it a bit more before I take it away into sort of Lightroom or into Camera Raw and have a bit more of a play around with it. To do that then straight away there's too much saturation going on in here so I'm going to create saturation I'm going to do a clipping mask just to put it down only onto this layer. So I affect that and that will be done with this button here. If I pull down my saturation then, you can see I'm going to just pull it down to a point that sort of looks like it belongs with the image. So if I take this away, you get that full edited version of the stock photo that I've used. If I bring it back in, now it looks like it fits a bit more. And I can do the same thing with my contrast and curves. I can bring in these layers on top as well and tweak the, either the entire image or I can just tweak this sky a bit too. So if I was to bring in some curves on this as well, just to take away a little bit of the contrast that's going there. I might raise this slightly just to give some more brightness into the sky. But a lot of this is just playing around with it to try and make sure that when you walk away from your laptop, your desktop, whatever you're editing on, do the sky replacement, walk away, come back in five minutes and have a look at the image and say to yourself, does that look natural? Does that look like it's been taken um, as one photo rather than the sky replacement? So I'll quite often go away, so I might go and ask my wife and be like, what do you think of this photo? And she'll be like, yeah, that looks really good. And ask her, you know, what elements in it does she think's fake? And if the answer is nothing, then I know for the sort of general audience that this is going to come across and look quite realistic. Of course, you can do so much more when you throw this into Lightroom then, but I really like this technique because the sky replacement tool does work really well with the horizons, but sometimes you want to just get that nice blend between them. So this was the old method I used to use before the sky replacement tool came in. And I really like it. it. It just compositionally fixes what I want from photos. It also means when I'm out and actually shooting the landscape, I'm not too bothered if like the weather turns bad because I know I've got all of these tools when I get back into the studio that I can actually edit these photos up and fix them with as well. So let's have a look at a final edit of that. One note will be that now that I've actually created a sunrise here, I would actually have to paint um, with my mask in, I would have to actually sort of paint in some warmer tones, some light rays, and look at actually where the light would be hitting. So if this sun's coming down here, making this area brighter, a bit warmer, same over here as well. So let's have a look at the final image. So here's a quick edit that I've done up with Lightroom now, and uh, to me, I like this. It kind of all fits together. Um, looks a lot better than the sort of dull shot that I took, and definitely looks a lot better than what I took on the day. <laughs> But there you go, and then that's just two ways that you can replace the skies in Photoshop. It's a really handy method to know, and it also means next time you are out and about, don't be put off by the weather. Just go out and take them photos. If anything, it's good practice for you. Never be put off by the weather. So I hope you've enjoyed this and this has helped. Please drop me a like and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you want me to go over in the future. I've got a few more Lightroom tutorials coming up. And I've got some business tutorials to start with as well about how to sell your prints online. If that's something you're interested in, please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.